Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Mark Roberti, and this is the podcast for entrepreneurs who are looking for the breakthrough for their businesses. We hear more stories about young entrepreneurs making big splashes. The numbers of millionaires constantly grows when it comes to the younger segment in addition to the uh, non-millennial segment. And while it's not easy to achieve this level of success, the right work ethic and approach will get you there. And in today's episode, you'll learn how to achieve this rapid growth on the way to massive goals. Today's guest began his entrepreneurial journey cold calling to get leads for a mortgage company. He eventually started his own mortgage and real estate company and became a millionaire before turning 25. In the last 10 years, he has also made millions of dollars in the network marketing industry. Today's guest for episode 135 of the Breakthrough Success Podcast is none other than Romasio Fulcher. Romasio, it is such a pleasure to have you on the show. Hey, Mark, the pleasure is mine to be here, man. Congratulations to you and your entrepreneurial spirit for putting together this podcast here over the last year, man, and serving the community in the way that you do. Congratulations, my man. Thank you, Romasio, and um, I really do look forward to diving into this episode, but as per tradition, I do want to get some backstory first. So what first attracted you to becoming an entrepreneur? Uh, What drew me to becoming an entrepreneur was this. I grew up in Oakland, California. I'm 40 years old. I just turned 40 here in January, and I grew up in the inner city of Oakland with my mother and my father. They love me to death. I love my family. Uh, I was very fortunate to have four brothers. We went to Catholic schools. My dad was a commercial flooring contractor. He did not believe in working for someone. He believed in being an entrepreneur. While my mother was an executive for the Food and Drug Administration for over 30 years. And so if you understand, you've got mom who believes in having a job, following the rules, And basically, my father believes in breaking all the rules as an entrepreneur. And so um, and so that was kind of, you know, kind of giving you an idea of the mindset, uh, you know, of of how I was brought up in terms of, you know, my, my parents. And so what drew me to being attracted to being an entrepreneur was the ability to be free. I never wanted to be a millionaire. Uh, That was the furthest thing from my mind, Mark. I never thought I could become a millionaire. There was nobody in my family that's ever made millions of dollars. My family, I love them to death, but they're both, my mom and dad are, you know, lower middle class, but they're broke. They're broke. And so, but they're hard workers. And like I said, I love them dearly. Everything I am and everything I ever will be, I owe to my parents for sure. But I didn't come from money. So I want to make that clear. But one of the things that I was attracted to about being an entrepreneur I was attracted to the freedom that we get a chance to enjoy. I'm a very free spirited type of person. I like to be able to live life on my own terms. But the question is, how do you do that? Right. And so um, I dropped out of college in Sacramento after one year of attending. And I met a white I, I met a white guy. And I always tell everybody that he was white. And the reason why I tell everyone that he was white Because I want people to know that oftentimes the very thing that you are hoping for, looking for, praying for doesn't look like you. It doesn't sound like you. And it doggone sure doesn't think like you. And so um, there I was. uh, I think I was about 20 years old. Yeah, I I was 20 years old. And uh, literally I was dead broke, just dropped out of college. My parents told me they wasn't going to give me any more money. So I had to find my own way. And uh, and as I'm I'm there in in walks this this gentleman, white guy dressed in this nice, fancy suit. He was really looking sharp. And, um, you know, he must have been early 30s or something like that. Early 30s. And I said to him, wow, you look sharp. He did. He looked really, really nice in his suit. And I said to him, if you don't mind me asking you, what do you do? I think that's one of the most powerful questions that you can ever ask somebody you don't know. I think you should always be curious. You know, curiosity is the only way you're going to ever become ultra successful because you don't know what it is you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. 
And so I asked this young man, I said, hey, what do you do? He told me he owned his own mortgage and real estate company. And I'm sitting there thinking, wow, you know, and he gave me his business card. And from that, I then um, I pursued him. And uh, long story short, Mark, he hired me as his assistant on all commissions in the mortgage and real estate business as a telemarketer. And what that means, if people don't know, that just simply means I used to cold call people. I would call their home and I would call people asking them if they wanted to purchase a home or refinance their home. And this is what I did. And it was very, very tough because people didn't know me and they would hang up the phone on me. And it was tough. But I was determined to be successful because I was very grateful that this man had given me an opportunity. You know, as you asked this question, Mark, of what attracted me to be an entrepreneur, I told you freedom. I wanted to be free. I wanted to make money and I wanted to be free. But I want to tell you this because this is really important for all of your listeners to catch this. Most people, when we're young, and some of us that are older, oftentimes we don't really know what we want to do with our lives. We know we either we want to be successful. Sure, we would love to follow our passion, right? But 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 sometimes, most oftentimes, we just don't know what we want to do. We don't know what we want to do. And a lot of times we hear people telling us things like, follow your passion. Well, let me let me share with you how that's wrong advice. I'm passionate about basketball. Okay. I'm passionate about golf. You know, I'm passionate about a lot of things that unfortunately that's just not the way my life has worked out for me. Okay. So I I don't agree with the whole notion of follow your passion. Now, if you happen to be very young and let's say you've got a great jump shot or you've got an amazing voice or you play a fancy instrument or you just, in other words, it just happens to be obvious you know, at an early age that you are exceptional at something, then, 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 then this is where maybe you're just that one person or, you know, you're that rare breed that has been created from birth virtually to do that thing that you do. But for the vast majority of most of us, that's not how it works. We have to go on a journey to discover what it is we should be doing, to discover our life's purpose and mission. And so listen to me. I want you to understand this. So I'm reminded of a quick story uh, from a pastor that he said it was a, it was a story between a pastor and his son. His son came to him uh, and he said, Dad, I'm confused about what I should do with my life. He said, Dad, I have an opportunity to do this thing. But, Dad, I'm unsure if I should do it, because if I do, what if things don't work out for me, Dad? then I will have wasted my time on this thing. And I don't want to waste my time. The father looked over to the son and he said this. He said, son, I want you to put 150% of your efforts into that thing. He says, because here's what I can tell you for sure. Even if that thing is not the right thing for you, it will certainly lead you to the right thing. And I think that that is so profound, that story, because that's exactly how my life's mission. That's how my life has happened. That's how it's that's how it's happened for me in my life. I had just told you I became a telemarketer and I worked my ass off and literally I became good at it. And next thing you know, I graduated from a telemarketer. It led me to becoming a loan officer. And then it led me from becoming a loan officer to then owning my own mortgage and real estate firm and becoming a millionaire just six years later after I started. And then I was a multimillionaire many, many times over in that profession. Once again, because I put all of my energy into that thing, it actually led me to where I am today to ultimately the thing I'm supposed to do. So my message to all of you, whatever you put your hands to, I say it again, whatever you put your hands to, You give it your all. I don't care if you're doing it part time, sometimes, whatever. You give it everything you got because you want your name to be synonymous with the word success. 
And the word success simply means to make progress. That's all it means. It means to make, it's the progressive realization of a worthwhile goal. Success means to make progress. Success has nothing to do with who's the next billionaire. It has everything to do with are you making progress in your life? Okay, first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, and so forth and so on. Make progress. So whatever you put your hands to, make sure that you give it everything that you've got because it certainly will lead you to the next thing. And so that's kind of a long answer of what drew me to becoming an entrepreneur. I obviously, I was a mortgage and real estate broker for 13 years and had a lot of fun and had a lot of success there. And then of course, you know, 10 years ago, I got a phone call that introduced me to the profession that I'm involved with today. Romasio, thank you for sharing with us how you got started with being an entrepreneur. You mentioned how at one point you were broken and you were able to become a millionaire before 25. And uh, you taught, you mentioned that you had to work really hard to reach the status of, I feel like all millionaires, they do have to put in a lot of effort to achieve that level of financial freedom. But um, what did your work ethic look like uh, as you went towards this goal of being a millionaire? Well, again, as I say to you, my goal was never to become a millionaire, but the way that that happened, I was surrounded by a millionaire. I hope, I hope you caught that Mark, because if you ever have the ambition of wanting to have big goals and dreams, you've got to understand the power of environment. You are going to have to learn to surround yourself with people that have what it is that you want. You know, I think we've all heard before that you are the average of the top five people you spend the most time with. But here's the problem. When you're dead broke and all your friends are broke, Romacio, how do I go out and find these new people to hang out with? Well, there's something called CDs. There's something called tapes. There's something called iPod downloads, which you do, YouTube, all social media. You go and find who these people that you are drawn to, inspired by, attracted to, and you follow them, you begin to listen to them frequently, okay? And as you do so, what's going to happen, the more you listen to them over and over and over and over again, you're going to understand their thought process. And, and shortly thereafter, your thought process is going to be very similar to their thought process. And see, you have to understand that thoughts are things, See, everybody wants to always ask me, what was your work ethic like? What did you do? That is the wrong question, in my opinion. The right question is, what was your thought process like? T share with me, Romancio, what thoughts led you to where you are today? How, you know, wh what was your mindset like? That's the question we should be asking, because really thoughts come before actions. Actions don't come before thoughts. It's the other way around. And so really... What happens or the way the way my thought process uh, uh, was influenced was because of my environment. I was around someone that was on his way to becoming a millionaire. I was around someone that believed in the infinite possibilities of what he could do. Therefore, me being next to him meant what we could do. You see what I'm saying? You have to understand that you are a reflection of your thoughts. Every single one of your listeners that are listening today. So if I were to encourage you what to do with your time, it's not just about hard work. Hell, my mother and my father worked hard for 40 years, Mark, but they're both broke. So you can't tell me it's all about hard work. That's not true. It's all about smart work. And smart work means educating yourself. And I don't mean a formal education like going to college. I mean learning from other people and their mindset. See, Napoleon Hill talks about that at the root of all success, you're going to find burning desire. And this is the thing I love, because for anyone to be successful at anything, you've got to have a burning. It didn't say just desire. It said it must be burning, a burning desire. And see, for me, it was it, 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 there was no way I was going to be a loser. No way. No, 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 no. I, I never said I wanted to be a millionaire. But, Mark, I can tell you, I damn sure wasn't going to be a loser. Because that meant that I did not apply any effort at all. And see, effort is the only thing that you can control in your life. You can't control nothing else, Mark. And your listeners can't control anything else but their 
effort. And that means persistence. That means having a burning desire to want more for your life. And once you have that, you, to get more, you then have to understand how to think more. you got to learn how to think. And, and I know it's such a hard con conversation because you say, well, how do I learn how to think better? Hang out with people, follow people that already have what you want, and you're going to discover how they think. So, again, when you ask me about my work ethic on my way to becoming a millionaire, let me tell you the work that I did. The work I did was I spent more time working on me, developing me from reading books, listening to tapes, going to seminars. I can't tell. I've probably been to over 120 seminars. I love going to personal development workshops. I love going to any type of church and hearing a man of God preach a word. A bit, a, a, I don't care what type of God. I don't care if it's Catholic, Buddhist. I don't care if it's uh, Christian. I don't give a darn. I like to hear about the truth of my potential. I like to hear about what's possible for my future. This is what I like because I believe in this. I don't think the glass is half empty. I actually know it's half full. And so this is something my life's work, Mark, has been spent on cultivating my mind. Here's why. Wherever you find yourself in life, I can promise you this. It doesn't matter what happens to you. Every single one of your listeners are going to have adversities that are going to happen in their life. There is no way for any of you to get out of, the, to get out of this life without going through stuff. It's going to happen to all of us. So it doesn't matter what happens to you, but here's what matters. What happens inside of you. How do you interpret your life's misfortune? How do you interpret your life's shortcomings? How do you interpret where you're at and what's going on and all the stuff about you, whether you're skinny, fat, or whatever. What does that mean to you? You see, life to me is really all about meaning. See, nothing is ever going to happen until you apply the right meaning to it. And so some people say, well, I'm meant to be poor. I'm meant to be broke. I just don't have the entrepreneurial spirit, Mark. That's just not me. I'm meant to just flip burgers for the rest of my life. That's what I'm supposed to do. See, I don't believe that at all. I don't believe that at all. But, it, but, but the reason why somebody else believes that, because it's the way that they interpret the happenings of their life. They feel because mama, daddy didn't have it, they grew up poor or whatever, that means they're supposed to be poor. That ain't true. Well, wait a minute, Ramasio, how can you say this? Because I've spent, my, I've spent my life cultivating my mind, learning about personal development. I've spent my life educating myself on the power of choice. We all have a choice of what to believe and what not to believe. It's, and, and, and depending upon what choice you choose will clearly determine the actions you take and will clearly determine the results that you produce with your life. So when you ask me, well, what my work ethic was like, my work ethic is all about conditioning my mind because 90% of the battle and anything that you do is mental, and Mark, 10% is only physical. I'm going to say that again. 90% is mental, while 10% is physical. For example, when we talk about success, 90% of you being financially successful has to do with your desire, your timing, and your strategy. Your desire, your timing, and your strategy. Do you notice none of those have anything to do with hard work yet? Hard work is the number four element. Of course, you got to work hard, but you could work hard with the wrong timing and the wrong strategy and you ain't going to go nowhere. So again, 90%, my friends, comes down to your desire, number one, your timing, number two, your strategy or system, number three. And then finally, number four is hard work, of course. And it's interesting how you have a strong focus on self-education, uh, listening to audio content, tapes, uh, surrounding yourself with the right people. And I can see how surrounding yourself with the wrong crowd would really hold you back from reaching your full potential. But uh, do you see anything else as something that would prevent us from reaching our full potential on the way to success? You just said it, Mark. You just said it. You just said it. You just said it. Influence is the number one most important skill of your whole life. Influence. 
And guess who the first person we have to learn to influence is? Ourselves. You just said it. If you took the boy in the ghetto and you put him in the suburbs and you took the boy in the suburbs and you put him in the ghetto, I promise you, they'll, they'll, they'll become two totally different boys. Why? Because of their influences. That's why. And so literally, this is so important that, you know, for example, I have a 13 year old son. I do the best I can to make sure that I put him as in many that I purposely place him in environments that I know are going to influence him in the right direction versus the wrong direction. I do the best I can uh, until he gets to be 18. Right. To try and place him in environments that are that are going to speak to what's possible for him versus what limits him. I don't want my son to ever think that he can't have anything. In fact, I tell him all the time, you could have whatever you want in this life if, number one, you negotiate it, and number two, you earn it. So again, influence is the number one most important skill that will take a person up the hill. So the best way, fastest way to influence yourself is listen to others that have what it is you want and really begin to understand how they think is much differently than what you think. This should be, to me, this is the fun part about life. Learning how you can have the same experience happen to two different people, but they'll have two totally different outcomes based upon the meaning that they attach to that experience. And it's interesting how influence, it's, it's very important. And uh, the environments we're in definitely have a big impact on us. And all the content, whether it be book, audio book, tape, anything like that, that we're consuming, uh, that's going to have a big influence on us as well. And uh, audio books in particular, um, uh, any Breakthrough Success listener who wants to listen to audio books can get a free audio book of their choice over at Audible. If you head over to markabird.com slash Audible, you get a free month there. So I wanted to throw that out there for anyone who wants to boost their um, self-education. And with the idea of boosting self-education, uh, Romasio, I'm wondering if you could share with us three great books that you believe would have a positive impact on us. Sure. Number one, Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. It's by, written by Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. The secret to success is, is hidden on every single page in that book. I'm going to say it again. It's written by Napoleon Hill. It's called Think and Grow Rich. The secret to success is hidden on every single page inside of that book. That's number one. Number two, Hung by the Tongue. Hung by the Tongue. 60-page book, really short. Hung by the Tongue. It allows you to understand the power of your words. Okay? And then number three, one of my most favorite books, is it's written by Mike Murdoch. Mike Murdoch. 31 Reasons why people do not receive their financial harvest. 31 reasons why people do not receive their financial harvest. Written by Mike Murdoch. Those are three books that I recommend. Ramasio, thank you for those great book recommendations. Those will all be in the show notes at markberry.com slash E135. And before we wrap up this episode, uh, I would like to uh, flip the tables a little bit. So I've asked you a few questions during our time together, but what do you believe is one question that we need to be asking ourselves more often? The one question that I think every person should ask themselves every single day, am I getting closer towards what I want and what I picture in my life, or am I getting further away? Let me say that again. Every single day, you should ask yourself, am I getting closer towards what I picture for my life, or am I getting further? I think the quality of your life is in direct proportion to the quality questions that you have asked yourself. The quality of your life is in direct proportion to the quality questions that you ask. You ask dumbass questions, you're going to get dumb answers. Quality questions take you forward. And the most thought-provoking question, being that we all have one life to live and we all want to make the most of our lives, is asking ourselves the question, am I getting closer towards what I picture? 
or am I getting further from what I picture? I believe that single question sincerely asked by yourself will open your eyes to the reality of where you sit in your current life right now. That is the number one question you should ask every single day. The, other, the number one statement I should tell people would be never be afraid to fail. Failing is perfect. There's no such thing as failure in my opinion. You either win or you learn. You either win or you learn. There's no such thing as failing. You fail forward. There's no such thing. It's, it's failing. Is, I love failing. Most oftentimes, many people don't know this, that 90% of all entrepreneurs, we fail 90% of the time. Say it again. All entrepreneurs, we fail 90% of the time. That means we miss the mark 90%. Oh, but let me tell you, Mark, the 10% of times that we do hit the mark, we hit the ball out the park. <laughs> the 10 the 10 percent that we get it right that ball goes out of the building so again you don't got to be right 90 percent. you just need to be right 10 percent. but you'll never find the 10 percent unless you're willing to, unless you're willing to go through the 90 percent Romasio, thank you for that thought-provoking question and also the statement as well and i feel like it's important to realize that our failures do move us closer to success. So that is a really great insight. In addition to all the other great insights Romasio shared that we should be taking away from this episode. And if you guys want to learn more about Romasio, he actually has an interesting opportunity. So if you head over to workwithromasio.com, he actually wants to help 75 people make $10,000 per week. He's looking for very ambitious people. So if you are interested in that opportunity, head over to work with Romacio, R-O-M-A-C-I-O dot com. That will be in the show notes as long as everything else that we mentioned in this episode. Romacio, I can't thank you enough for being a great guest on the show. Thank you for sharing your insights with us today. Thank you so much, Mark. Appreciate it, man. How does over 100 retweets per day sound to you? My free ebook, 27 Ways to Get More Retweets on Twitter, has you covered I use the methods within this ebook to get over 10,000 retweets every single quarter. To learn more and get access to this free resource, visit markgaberti.com backslash 